What's going on, my fellow Jedi Padawans? Welcome back to another Jedi Gaming video. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the channel. And if you guys are new, welcome, welcome. We are gonna get right into it today because we have a lot, a lot to go over. Content is coming out the wazoo with the release of Season of the Haunted and Season 17. Now in this video here, we are going to be talking about the Dialect Leviathan and our Nightmare Containment public activity on side of it. Now, there is a little bit of confusion with this just because there's two different playlists that do the exact same thing. It's just how people play in each of those game modes. So first off here to unlock this Dialect Leviathan and be able to access the landing zone here, you just gotta complete our initial quest and mission of this season, and it'll progress you straight into being able to do some certain tasks on the Leviathan for our quest steps. Now, once you have access to the landing zone, we have two different game activities here, which all have the Nightmare Containment public event, which we are going to talk about fully in a second. But this first playlist right here is for people looking to explore the Leviathan more than actually grind out that Nightmare Containment event. This is because that Nightmare Containment event is very similar to the Blind Well or Altar of Sorrow, where it's not a set fire team going in. It depends on the people around you. So you can range from only having yourself up to an entire gaggle of people, six, seven, eight around doing this event inside of that public space. So this means going into this playlist right here, the Castellum. This is more for the exploring, but you can also still do that nightmare containment public event in our main area. Just you might not have as much help compared to going in and doing the containment version, which more people in that playlist here will be focused on the actual public event rather than going to the different parts of the Leviathan, which we will also get to in a second here. Now getting into the Nightmare Containment public event itself. When you load into the Leviathan, you have that big public space where you can see there's an area to set down our artifact as well as a public event flag. You can collect that and start our event. Now the event consists of three different waves that we have to go through. The first two are basically mirror images of each other, just in different areas that we are in. And then our final third wave is the final boss that we have to deal with, which rewards us the final chest, as well as we can bond some of these shards and souls together, which we can use in other activities this season. Kind of interesting, and I will explain that as well. So within those three waves that I talked about, the first two are very similar, just in different areas. Those first two waves have four different steps to them. So within the first step, we have to deal with different waves of enemies, as well as some yellow bars that will drop some orbs where we can actually deposit the orbs into the artifact to get more shards donated, which that's how we add up our little counter and progress to the second step of the wave now also when you deposit those orbs from defeating those yellow bar enemies we get that sweet looking solar scythe for this public event kind of like the synaptic spear of last season this has two different moves your melee move where it kind of throws out a solar burn and then a slam where it has a wave of solar damage this is super good for clearing out ads and it does a decent amount of damage on enemies once again, to unlock that scythe and get it to spawn, you have to defeat those yellow bar enemies. And when the enemy drops an orb of power that you can collect, you actually grab it and walk with it and deposit it at the artifact to get that scythe to drop. Now that right there is the first step. Once you wipe out those yellow bars and the ads around and kind of count up all of those shards for that little counter you will see in the left hand corner, you move on to the second step, which is super easy. The second step, you will see scions and waves of enemies walking around. There will be certain scions that you have to defeat. They will have the new symbol for this season above their head, so you can see which ones we actually have to defeat. Once you defeat those scions walking around, there will actually be a corresponding scion that spawns inside of that little protective bubble that we have had before, where you actually have to walk up to the scion and melee it to destroy it. You can't shoot through that 
that little protective bubble or anything like that. So you have to find the scion walking around first, destroy that, it is pretty easy to destroy those, and then that corresponding scion inside of the protective bubble will spawn, melee it, and then you move on to our third step. The third step of the first two waves is basically the same exact thing as our first step. We have to deal with waves of enemies as well as those yellow bars that drop the orbs where we deposit them at the artifact to get our scythe. Now the third step of the wave is just a little bit harder. There's more enemies you have to deal with and wipe up and then there's also a couple more yellow bars that drop the orbs but on the plus side because we have more orbs there are more scythes going around for the people inside of the public event. Now it is timed and you have to do all four of the steps within a certain amount of time, which is pretty easy to get if you have enough people going through on the fire team. So if you're really going to grind out the actual public event, make sure you're going in that containment playlist, not our cast alone. So moving on from our third step where we just wipe out those enemies and those bosses and deposit the orbs at the artifact, we move on to our fourth and final step of our first two waves. This is a boss in each of those waves. Now the bosses are pretty easy to defeat. You do a nice little bit of damage on them and then they actually get shielded by one of those impenetrable shields. To undo their shields, there will be those little cruxes that we actually had last season on the throne world. You defeat the cruxes and destroy them and once all the cruxes in the area are defeated, the boss becomes unimmune again and then you can actually do your damage and the rest of its health bar it's only two phases per each of that fourth step so that is a pretty easy little four step and boss to defeat now when you're done with that first wave and that first boss it basically just like i said moves to another area in our public space right there and you just rinse and repeat those first four steps that i said before first one we deal with enemies and bosses deposit the orbs at our artifact second one is our scions we actually have to find the scions walking around and then punch the scions inside of the bubbles that form after we defeat the scions walking around the third step basically the same as the first wipe out waves of enemies as well as yellow bars with depositing those orbs and then our fourth and final step again is just that little boss where you do a certain amount of damage. It becomes immune. You have to shoot cruxes around it to unlock that shield. It'll become damageable again and then you wipe it out and move on to our third and final wave which is the final boss of this event that we have. Now I'm sure we're gonna have many different bosses because we're gonna go through the different nightmares we've had and kind of go through the story of dealing with Zavala's nightmare, our guardian, Aldrin, everything like that. So this final boss kind of culminates everything that we had beforehand, minus those scions. So we do a certain amount of damage on this final boss right here. And after you reach its little health bar, it'll become immune and you have to shoot the cruxes around the boss area to unlock it again. But instead, this time of him becoming unlocked straight after you shoot those cruxes, there will be some abominations which you have to destroy, at least this week. I'm sure the enemies might change a little bit, but there will be an enemy that shielded that you have to destroy first before you can proceed to damage the final boss. And it's just rinse and repeat for this final boss, three different phases for it, for its three different health bars do a certain amount of damage on the enemy. Once you do a certain amount of damage, it'll become immune. You have to shoot the little cruxes around the area, then proceed on to defeating those couple enemies right in front of him. Once that is defeated, the actual boss becomes damageable again, and you can continue your damage phase and wipe him out super quickly. A little facet that I should say, there are overload champions around inside of this public event, so it's nice to bring in that mod, but they are pretty squishy, so you can deal with them without stunning them. It just helps to have that option. Now, once you defeat that final boss, you have the chest that'll spawn and you can collect. Now, on the flip side, there is that artifact that we were using to start and slam those orbs on. You can spend 500 of our new seasonal currency to actually bond one of those souls together and get some extra loot. And you have the chance to actually get something called a bond presence. This occasionally drops from binding those nightmares in the containment. 
This is tied to our sever activity, which I will also put on a video later tonight about. But once you get that bond presence occasionally, so it's RNG from binding the nightmare, spending 500 of our seasonal currency, you get some rewards, and then you have that chance of getting bond presence. This is automatically consumed once you open a chest on the sever mission at the end and you get some extra loot from it. So the extra rewards that you you get from spending that 500 is super nice plus you have the chance to actually get that bond presence and tie it into our sever mission which is also super fun kaizen kind of like the season of the splicer where we went through all of those different pathways for that season now tying it up from like i said before collecting that chest and spending that 500 seasonal currency we have the chance to get our opulent keys which is nice you can go around the leviathan and open certain chests those keys have the chance of giving us our seasonal armor as well as like our beloved drang chaos mini tool and then also just drops from the actual event you can get our new seasonal weapons as well as seasonal armor which is nice because that seasonal armor has a perk on it which gives you some of our extra seasonal currency on different events within the leviathan which can stack up to an extra 20 percent for collecting that so it might be a super good way to collect our seasonal currency super fast and get it just taken care of immediately it's that vestige of dread that we see collected from different areas you can also get some Ascendant Alloys from this, which is super nice. And then, like I stated before, that Bond Presence, which we can use inside of our Sever mission as well to get some extra loot inside of that. So it's super nice to get our Seasonal Weapons, our Menagerie Weapons, some Ascendant Alloys, and then also our Seasonal Armor. So it's a really nice, really nice loot pool. And the public event is actually pretty fun. Excited to see the different variations we're going to have of it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this helped you guys deal with this new public event that we have, the Nightmare Containments. Super fun. Get into it. Grind it out. Get that new seasonal gear. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.